This is a nice leisurely stroll through problem one of practice exam one of module 12 in the book Problem Solving Guide for Mechanics and Thermodynamics. We have three moles of an ideal monatomic gas of 300 kelvins in a container of volume 50 liters. The gas is then heated to 400 kelvins at constant pressure and then cooled back to 300 kelvins at constant volume. Part A asks for the total change in internal energy of the gas in the two-step process. Part B is Q, positive, negative, or zero. Q is the thermal energy transferred into the gas or out of the gas through the walls of the container by heating or cooling it. Part C, what is delta Q for the two-step process? We can answer part A right away. Got to be zero. Starts at 300 kelvins, ends at 300 kelvins, the total energy Internal energy is only a function of temperature. If it's at the same temperature, it has to have the same internal energy. B and C are a lot more involved. We can certainly take shortcuts to the answer, but we're going to be methodical and thorough. Ideally, we'd love to plot the three states on a PV diagram so we can see the transitions and get delta get Q. So here's pressure versus volume. We'd love to put the three states on there, but we can't even do one of them right now. So this is an unknown. We have to take it slow and figure it out. What's going on? Let's get all the information about the three states. We can sketch them roughly. Here's state one. Three moles, 300 kelvins, and a volume of 50 liters. We don't know the pressure. Then we heat it at constant pressure. If you heat something and you keep the pressure the same, it has to get bigger. The volume has to expand. Now it's 400 kelvins. We know we don't know the pressure or the volume. Then we heat it at constant volume. We cool it at constant volume back to 300 kelvins. So here's where we stand. State one, the initial state. State two, intermediate state, 400 kelvins. State three, the final state, back to 300 kelvins. The initial state, we know we have three moles at 300 kelvins and a volume of 50 liters. We can use the ideal gas law to get the pressure. PV is equal to nRT. Plug in the numbers. We get 149,600 newtons per square meter as the pressure in state one. Let's add that to the diagram. So there it is. The transition from one to two is isobaric, same pressure. So we know the pressure of state two is also 149,600 newtons every square meter. So let's do that. Now we can use the ideal gas law to get the volume of state two. PV is equal to nRT. Solving for V, substituting in the numbers, we have the pressure here. Temperature is 400 kelvins and we get the volume 0.0667 cubic meters, which is 66.7 liters. Let's put that in there. Okay. The, the transition from state two to state three is the same volume, isochoric. So we know the volume of state three is also 66.7 liters. Let's put that in the diagram. And now the only thing we have to calculate is the pressure of state three. Use the ideal gas law. PV is equal to nRT. We have 300 kelvins in this volume now, and the pressure is now 112,200 newtons per square meter. Let's add that. So now we have three states. After you do a lot of these, you're not going to carry around all these constants like three moles and the gas constant. You can just use, const use proportionality. From one to two, the temperature goes up by a factor of four thirds from 300 to 400. If it's constant pressure, the volume has to increase by that same factor. Four thirds of 50 is 66.7. During the, trans the transition from two to three, the temperature is reduced by a factor of three fourths, goes from 400 to 300, so the pressure must be reduced by the same amount. 3 fourths of 149.6 is 112.2. So we didn't have to use PV is equal to nRT. We can just use some simple proportions. 
So now we're ready to, we have the three states, we can put them on a PV diagram so we can see what's going on, pressure versus volume. So here's the initial state, 50 liters, 149.6 right there. We heat it at constant pressure. It expands, pressure stays the same, it's horizontal to 66.7 liters. That's 400 kelvins. Then we cool it at constant volume back to 300 kelvins. Both of these are 300 kelvins and it's at a temperature of 112,200. Okay, there's where we are. Gas does work from here to here. It's pushing on the piston and the piston's moving back. There's a force against the piston. The pistons is move, piston is moving in the direction of the force. That's positive work. And it's simply pressure times change in volume. The change in volume is 16.67 liters, 0 0.0167667 cubic meters, which is 2490 joules. The gas does no work from here to here. The volume is not changing. It's pushing, but it's not moving. No work. The change in internal energy of the gas is zero. It's at the same temperature. We can put, this is an isotherm. Same temperature. All of the points on this line are 300 kelvins. These two points are on the line. Those are both 300 kelvins. They have the same internal energy. But the gas did work from here to here. Where did that come from? Where did it get this 2490 joules if it's at the same temperature? Energy must be conserved. This energy must have come from thermal energy added through the walls, Q. So for part B, we know Q is positive because the gas did work and it's at the same temperature. And for part C, it's got to be 2490 from conservation of energy. If we really understand what's going on after doing a large number of these problems, we can do it all in just one slide. The total internal energy change is zero. It starts at 300, ends up at 300. The work the gas does must be supplied by Q, by putting thermal energy in. The gas only does work from one to two. The work is PDV. We can calculate the pressure from the ideal gas law, NRT over V. We get 149.6. Since the temperature increases by four thirds from one to two, the volume must increase by four thirds. The volume change is 0 0.01667 cubic meters. The work is P delta V plus 2490. The gas did that much work with no change in internal energy. That has to be Q plus 2490. That's it. That's problem one.